By the way, I got to mention, I am not sponsored in any way by DaVinci or b and I bought and paid for these things with my own money and just want to talk about the things I like about them and my experiences. Hey, Kitty Smalls, what you think of that speed editor, boy? It's fresh to mother death, son. What the hell that? Kitty. DNA made from Nikon Z chromosomes, homie. I guess my secret's out and now you know me. Okay then, so my first thought about the speed editor was that I didn't really need it. But who am I to turn down a free item as dope as this, you know what I'm saying? But maybe I could sell it right, offset the cost of upgrading if I wanted to. Also, I'm someone who's always edited my timelines in the edit page and only used the cut page for things like audio syncs and well, I mean, that's about it really. But more and more, I'm learning to use a cut page now, which this speed editor is mostly designed for and I'll cut straight to the chase after playing with it for a few days. Yo, I'm keeping it, man. I'm not a DaVinci Pro or certified whatever those people are that give tips and tutorials. I'm just a regular guy who does a little bit of YouTube and films other events for myself and my family, my friends, and love doing those things and playing with camera tools and tech. So from my perspective, I want to give you an idea of why I like this thing so much and why I have decided to keep it. Now keep in mind, this is an initial impressions video and I'm very green to this editing tool. But even with that being the case, I have some things that maybe you can relate to if you're like me as far as your workflow and requirements and you're thinking of upgrading to DaVinci Studio or buying the speed editor. So now I want to give you some reasons I like this thing and why I want to get better using it and the cut page. So without further blah blah blah, blah 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 here are my top five things that I love about this thing so far. Before that though, let's do a quick unboxing and discussion about the Dongle Studio version install that I received, which was very easy, so that won't take too long. All right, so I've been waiting for this a long time. Now here's the box that the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor comes in. Nice looking box, it's about, you know, 12 by 11, something like that, 12 by 10. Not a big box, just to give you an idea of what the size of the actual speed editor is. So let's open this up for the first time. Now I took the plastic off already just for the sake of saving a few seconds. And we got some nice foam here, protective foam. And there we have the speed editor. Dang, looks real nice. It's got a nice feel to it. The plastic obviously this here on the top. The buttons feel nice, mechanical, tactile. And we got ourselves a real nice spin wheel. Wow, look at that thing go, man. That thing nice and loose, look at that. That's gonna be real good, you know what I'm saying? Good for scratching, you know what I'm saying? All right, now I'm just playing. So anyways, so this is the speed editor itself. Let's take it out, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, it's heavy, man. It's got some weight to it. All right, then. Made of quality materials, I think. It's a good quality plastic. I mean, it must be some real powerful stuff on the inside because this thing does have some weight to it, no question about it. But it feels nice, you know what I'm saying? I like those buttons, man. I like the way they sort of laid out with the colors, you know what I'm saying? You got that full view red button, in and out, the white buttons, you know what I'm saying? Cam 1, Cam 2, stop play on the space bar like it is on the normal keyboard. It's a nice looking little piece of equipment, There's no question about it, man. Boy, I can't wait to try this out for sure. Let's see what else we got in here. Just some reading materials, DaVinci Resolve 16. Now mine came with DaVinci Resolve 16. I did purchase the DaVinci Resolve 17 studio version, but I guess this package, you know, the ones that they be getting in, at least the one that I got from B&H came with DaVinci Resolve 16 studio. But don't don't stress about that. I actually called the B and H, and they got in touch with Black Magic just to sort of verify all this before I opened everything up because I was worried that you know I don't want to open it up and then come to find out that yo I should have just waited and got them to send me the 17 studio version. But all I had to do is, and what you can do too if you get the 16 version is, you go to their download website, and I put that link down in the description below. Uh, you just click on that link; that'll take you straight to DaVinci. Uh, where you can download the 17.1 the update version as of today when I'm making this video so there might be a different version but for now you just download the 17.1 studio update version install that on your computer if you have DaVinci already installed on your computer whatever version you have installed you know back up your files and then uninstall it before you install the 17.1 update version but then once you uh, install the 17.1 update version all you have to do is uh, make sure you have your dongle plugged into the back of your computer or whatever wherever USB connection on your computer and when you start the program it'll automatically recognize the dongle and that'll be your key so you won't even have to like sign in with anything or anything like that and just obviously I ordered the dongle version so 
that's why I'm talking about the dongle. But you know, uh, so for those of you who did the same as me and maybe ordered the dongle version, but here we go. We got some of this here, DaVinci 16 software installer. But that, you know, that's you know, you're not gonna want to install the 16. You're gonna want the latest. Couple stickers here, you know what I'm saying? And then we have like a little welcome booklet, I guess, talking about an online manual and all that. And then you got your USB-C to USB-C cable. Okay then. I guess that connects to obviously the speed editor and that's gonna connect to your USB-C connection on the back of your computer. And that's it, man. That's all you get in the box. All right then. All right then, number one. The thing I really love about this editor is the electronic search dial. It is smooth as silk, boy, let me tell you, and really nice to use to scroll through your footage. You can set it to shuttle, which is like a playback setting that lets you play the footage at different speeds depending on how much you turn the dial, either backwards to play your footage backwards or forwards to play it forwards, of course. Now, I find myself using the jog setting mostly because I will play your footage frame by frame and give you a very precise playback so you can edit your clip very accurately. Now, the scroll button is good too because it allows you to go through your footage and timeline a lot faster for me this is my first time using an editing tool like this wheel and it's real easy to get used to the feel is super nice and smooth man you can feel how quality it is by the bearings they use to support the movement and it's made from very high quality what i assume is billet aluminum and surrounded by a really great feeling grippy rubber that's nice to the touch so yeah this dial is fresh to death if you know what i'm saying and it's used in combination with so many buttons on the interface here to do so many different functions which is a great thing because the dial is very nice and easy to use so talking about using the dial in conjunction with the buttons let's get to my number two favorite tool something that I always get to when I edit if not at first very close to it is adjusting my audio levels and with this dial here while holding down the audio level button you can adjust the audio levels perfectly while playing the footage and keeping a keen eye on the DB levels you know what I'm saying as well as your ear to the sound level it's so easy and user friendly to do I mean I always hated doing this with the mouse because it's so inaccurate and just annoying to try and dial it in pardon the pun while holding the mouse button down and sliding it back and forth and all I mean the dial and the button on this edit are so much better man and it also works for those adjustments in the edit page now it's just simpler faster more accurate get that great sound level that you want you know what I'm saying and we all know how important good audio levels are to a video and the speed edit is far more precise for a show So my third favorite thing is the in and out function buttons being used in conjunction with the source tab to quickly go through your clips and append them to your timeline. Now I just find that it makes it nice and easy to get the correct footage that you're looking to whittle down from your clips. It's just a simple and accurate way to get what you want from a particular clip and speed up your workflow, you feel me? Of course, going back to my previous point, the dial makes it so easy to scroll through and get accurate in and out points. However, as a little extra to the third favorite thing I like about the speed editor, I will lump the trim in and trim out functions too with this section. So when you go back over the clips that you've added to your timeline, maybe you decide that you want to trim a little more. Well, if you use the trim in and trim out function buttons, it'll choose the closest edit point to your play line on the clip that you're on. And by you holding the trim in or trim out button, and once again, using that wonderful dial, you can either shorten or expand your desired clip to your desired length. Now it makes it super easy to make quick edits and trim down your footage for a better flow. It's just way faster than cutting the clip, removing it, ripple delete or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Which is how I used to do it in the edit page. And by the way, if you still want to do it that way, well, there are dedicated buttons for that now too on the speed editor. So the editor lets you do what you're most comfortable with. But for me as someone who has never used a tool like this before, it didn't take me but a minute to get used to the idea that there are better and more efficient ways for me to accomplish things that I used to in my edits but utilizing better easier and faster methods 
My fourth favorite thing, which may be pretty obvious and dumb to mention, and something that I inadvertently touched on, but that you can't ignore with this powerful tool, so I'll mention it anyways because I'm new to this kind of equipment, is that there are a lot of dedicated buttons for many different functions. Some buttons have more than one function too, depending on if you single, or double tap, or tap and hold, or double tap and hold. Now, I'm not a professional editor like I said before, so it's difficult for me to comment exactly on what buttons there should be that may be missing to improve my workflow or what buttons are unnecessary but I'm sure those with more experience in editing can come up with some examples now that being said I love that to undo an action I just pat pat double tap the escape undo button you feel me to see a full view I just tap this nicely indicated red full view button to cut a clip I just tap the split button then to get rid of that section tap ripple delete I can view the clip in the source box and scroll through quickly with the dial to a point I like, hit the in button until I get to a point where I want to cut it and hit the out, and then add it to the timeline with the append button. The point is, is that it's intuitive, nicely laid out and fast. It makes breaking down clips into a timeline very easy and efficient. So it may be a stupid thing to categorize as what I like about it, but I like the interface and ease of use, and that it doesn't take too much practice to get good with some basic functions that'll improve your overall workflow even for someone like me that hasn't ever used a piece of equipment like this before but if you're familiar with DaVinci and the editing process this editing tool is pretty easy to learn just from having a look at it obviously you'll probably want to watch a tutorial or two like I did and if you're looking for a good suggestion I would recommend checking out Chadwick on his channel creative video tips which I'll link down below because I found his content the best for getting myself up and running with the speed editor and he is a pro with like 20 years experience or something so he knows his ins and outs on the speed editor pretty well i found so shout out to my homeboy chadwick big up nephew my fifth favorite thing that i've discovered so far i'm going to call title and transition manipulation now with titles as far as i've tried so far i wasn't able to add a title with the title button but when the title has already been added you can double tap the transition title button and hold it down on the second tap and when you spin the dial you can choose whatever font you want from those available in the program now i know that's kind of a small dumb thing maybe but i find it very handy for transitions you simply press the transition button and you'll add a transition to the the nearest split and if you hold the transition button down you could choose whatever type of transition you like though i probably wouldn't use anything besides cross dissolve personally nevertheless you can choose what you like from what you have available to you in the program and if you hold down the transition duration button you can turn the dial then you can lengthen or shorten the transition according to your liking it's quick easy and accurate man like everything else with this speed editor All right then, so those are my top five, and so far those are my favorite functions, which might evolve the more I use this tool, but I didn't even get to the Cam 1 through Cam 9 buttons, which if I'm honest, I think is a bit much. I mean, I do actually have nine cameras, believe it or not, but I wouldn't think to use them all at one time personally to capture nine different angles, maybe two or three at most for myself personally, but there might be some people out there who do use that many cameras for different angles of whatever they shoot, and so, I mean, for those particular applications, there are dedicated buttons for that in order to switch between cameras to create that seamless kind of like go between in your timeline you know what i'm saying now you might have noticed that i decided to set up two cameras for the last two videos just to try it out so I'll indicate with text if it works well or if it's difficult to use because as of filming this right now, I haven't even used it yet. Now that being said, I just wanted to say that I edited these two videos on DaVinci, the studio version with the speed editor using the cut page primarily. And by the way, the answer to what cameras I'm using, drum roll, that I asked you to guess in my first video about the studio version of DaVinci are the following son. For the main camera is the Samsung NX30 and my camera too, Samsung NX300. I kind of chose them on purpose, I might add, because first of all, I haven't used them yet, but also so I can super scale then upscale to 4K and see what the results would be like from cameras that shoot 1080 max, you know what I'm saying? Both cameras filmed in 1080, 30 frames per second, then super scaled in the timeline, and then upscaled to 4K for YouTube. So in conclusion, I love this little tool, man. I can't wait to get better at using it the more I get a chance to practice with it. But my original intentions of maybe selling it have been totally thrown out the window because this hard to get item at this point is definitely gonna be staying with me.
All right, then. If you've thought about jumping up to DaVinci Resolve Studio like I've been thinking about for the longest time, then I honestly really think now is the time. It's amazing value, and that's what my channel is all about, man, finding the best value and bang for the buck. And if you made it this far in this video, I definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and all that bullshit. Comment down below. And, hey, I'll see you next time. Peace.